it's satisfactory. Hi everyone, I'm Jacob, I'm the Cowhat Librarian, and I've got an interesting one for you tonight that I found at the local public library, where I find so many of the books I talk about. And it is Snake's Big Mistake by Sarah Carpiel. As the story starts, Snake, our hero, is in art class, and Snake is sculpting away creating something brilliant out of clay. Well, except it doesn't turn out that brilliant. Snake is convinced that it will, and that the class will recognize the artistic talent behind the creation, but it broke in the baking process. Snake is pretty disappointed, for obvious reasons. But then Snake notices that the teacher made a mistake in the labeling and put Snake's name next to an amazing pot made by Turtle and Turtle's name next to the broken pot Snake made. Instead of fessing up, Snake accepts all the accolades coming his way and all the compliments from his classmates and his teacher and he eventually realizes how bad Turtle feels. That night at home, Snake just is overwhelmed with emotion and he smashes Turtle's pot to bits. So he tries to glue it together and tries to return it to Turtle and tries to apologize. It was good. I like the basic premise. Every kid out there has been in a situation where they've done something wrong that they knew was wrong and had to deal with the consequences of it. And this story is a really, really great way to talk about that and talk about the feelings involved and talk about how you, you may have hurt someone. I liked Kerpiel's art style. It's clear and colorful. Occasionally, I would have liked a little more contrast, you know, snake screen against this background cabinet screen. It would have been nice if it was a different color to offset snake a little better, perhaps. But I like the fun that Kerpiel had reflecting the characters' colors in the pots. That was a lot of fun. Each of the characters, each of the students and the teacher are very distinct from one another. And they come in all shapes and sizes, including what appears to be a porcupine in a wheelchair. Also, the tiger is fantastic. And, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. If you liked maybe things like some of Jeff Mack's books, maybe things like mine, I think you might get a kick out of this. Or maybe even to a lesser extent, Good News, Bad News, where the perspectives between the characters are so different and there's the dawning realization that the other person isn't seeing things the way you are. I would suggest both of those to people who like Snake's Big Mistake and vice versa. It's good. I recommend it. There are spoilers ahead, though, because I have to talk about the deal breaker. The deal breaker is this. The resolution is too clean. I know it's a picture book. I know we want a nice clean ending. I understand that. I don't want long, unresolved issues ending the book and having my kids ask, well, what happened next? Why didn't they do anything? Why didn't they say anything? But as the story goes, Snake returns the broken and repaired pot to Turtle, and Turtle says, thanks for apologizing, but it doesn't change anything. I guess we weren't friends, and wanders off. And Snake thinks about things, and he eventually decides to go talk to the teacher, explain what happened, beg for another chance for Turtle to make something, and to take responsibility. And the teacher lets them and lets Snake make things again, and 
he and Turtle make pots again, and they're friends at the end. And that's fine. And it's kind of funny that the two of them ended up making pots that had the pattern of their friend's colors on them, and that was a nice touch. But it was too clean. You know, the teacher giving Turtle another chance, I could see that happening, especially if it wasn't Turtle's fault in the first place, and especially if the teacher made a mistake. But why did Snake get another chance? Turtle forgives Snake incredibly easily after the teacher gives him the second chance, after a little bit of working together and talking. And I mean, I guess it conveys that you can repair a friendship after you've done something bad, but it'll take a little bit of time. It just, it felt a little too clean, a little too easy. I wouldn't want kids reading this thinking, oh, I did something horrible to my friend. It'll be fine by next week. That, that would be my only takeaway. Still, I liked it. I liked the artwork. I recommend it. Go borrow it from your local library. While well, I'm on that topic, if you use and appreciate the services offered by your local public library, why not take just one minute and tell the powers that be exactly that? Tell your mayor, tell a council member, tell your MP or MLA that you use and appreciate the services offered by your local public library. We're at a time where some libraries are having trouble finding sustainable funding to keep improving the materials, programs, and services they offer. And a few good words in the right ears might make a world of difference. If, by some chance, you're a library staff member, don't forget, watching my videos counts as professional development time. With that, thanks for listening to me slither and snake my way around this one. By all means, please like, please subscribe, and please check back and see what else I have to talk about from the Cowhat Library. Thank you. Bye now.